I don't think it's a stretch to say that in Code Geass fandom, everyone's favorite ship is Lelouch with C2. Any Code Geass group on social media is proof of this. They are packed with so much fan art of the couple. But despite what fans think, based on the original series, did C2 actually love Lelouch? Well, if you look at it from Lelouch's perspective, it's never made clear. Recently, I tried to take a crack at Lelouch's relationship with the three girls, and the link is available in the description below. Not only is Lelouch vague about this, C2 herself is hard to figure out. After all, she does come and go like the wind, as Lelouch once described her. I wanted to discuss how C2's relationship with Lelouch develops over R1 and R2 of the original series. A couple of disclaimers before we start. This video will contain spoilers. My analysis will only come from R1 and R2 because in the new universe, it's clear how C2 feels about Lelouch. Not all tasks have been cleared, let's begin. If C2 was in love with Lelouch, it was definitely not clear early on in the series. In stage one, C2 takes a bullet for Lelouch, which resulted in the famous scene of C2 offering Lelouch a contract while in a seemingly unconscious state. Lelouch uses the newly acquired Gias power to kill those men and would go on to help the terrorists fight the Britannians. Believing that C2 was most likely dead, imagine his surprise when Lelouch comes home and sees C2 waiting for him in the dorm room. Lelouch eventually grabs C2 and they head to the bedroom. From here, C2 makes it clear that she gave him the Gias power as part of their contract. She's very inquisitive and asks some tons of questions about his plans, but it's not a two-way street as C2 refuses to answer any of Lelouch's questions. She is fair and states later that he is not required to answer any of her questions. On the roof at Ashford Academy, C2 states that they are co-conspirators and are in this together, but the contract and ultimately her needs come first. C2 makes this very clear when she threatened to shoot him in the legs if he went to fight Cornelia. Lelouch was able to persuade C2 to allow him to fight Cornelia, but she sure gave it to him after he lost to her. It was a mixed bag of teasing and expressing legitimate frustration about the situation. C2 was almost implying that Lelouch should have listened to her and never left. C2 conveys from her tone that being with Lelouch is a nuisance. The contract is all that matters, not the mundane goals he has. She at least seemed amused by them, though. Things would start to change after the Battle of Narita. C2 saves Lelouch's life by sending images to Suzaku by touching the Lancelot. Lelouch, acting out of concern, tries to pry her apart from the Lancelot. It backfires as Lelouch sees images of C2's past. And once she was no longer touching the Lancelot, Suzaku goes berserk, firing everywhere. One of those blasts breaks a rock into pieces and one of those hits C2. Lelouch cleans C2's wound in a cave. While doing so, he hears C2 murmur her real name while she sleeps. After she awakens, Lelouch says her name and thanks C2. She was originally upset with Lelouch for even using her real name, but in a moment of shock and happiness, C2 cries and then states that no one else ever thanked her before. And from what Lelouch and the audience just saw, that makes perfect sense. C2 then asks Lelouch, to say her name one more time, only with tenderness and love, but Lelouch messed it up. Now, I was thinking at this point that C2 must now see Lelouch as a friend at least, but I was wrong. Once they both get back to Ashford, C2 goes back to only caring about the contract and not Lelouch's feelings. Shirley cancels her date with Lelouch to confirm her father's dead body in Narita. What's funny is, before this happens, Lelouch told C2 that he was going to cancel the date, and then C2 replied with, Keep your contracts, proving again that the contract is the most important thing to her. Lelouch is understandably upset after Shirley's funeral. He's having second thoughts about everything. C2 antagonizes Lelouch instead of comforting him during this rough time. She adds fuel to the fire by insulting him. She attacked him for falling apart because Lelouch never cared about hurting anyone, but now it bothers him because it was someone he knew. C2 makes it worse by asking him, I thought you were going to embark on the path of blood. She concludes with, You won't disappoint me, right? And you are in too deep to turn back now. This was the wrong thing to say to Lelouch at this time, but thankfully he was able to find the motivation from within to continue despite all that has been sacrificed. We can't discuss C2's relationship with Lelouch without talking about Mao. After all, Mao almost ended their relationship, but in the end strengthened it. Lelouch and C2 both start to look for Mao after what he did to Shirley and Narita. 
C2 searches on foot where Lelouch uses the Black Knights. Before this takes place, Lelouch and C2 share a conversation in his bedroom concerning Mao. In his anger, Lelouch blames C2 for what happened to Shirley. According to him, giving people contracts like that make you a monster. And that's exactly what he calls her. This conversation is very important and will be mentioned later on, so keep that in the back of your mind. But for now, let's continue. So C2 and Lelouch meet up at the hall where many club activities happen. After a phone call from Mao, C2 bids Lelouch farewell as she heads out to meet with Mao. Lelouch acted as if this was a betrayal, but C2 counters with, When were you my friend? Never. We were just co-conspirators. That's all. Lelouch listened to the recording of the phone call after C2 left and heard Mao's threats against him. He was basically blackmailing C2 to come back. But I am not sure if C2 went along because she cares about Lelouch or because she cares about the contract. Because remember, she needs Lelouch alive to fulfill her contract. Either way, she chose to go to Mao for Lelouch. Lelouch was smart enough to realize that Mao had evil intentions with reuniting with C2, so he put his plan into action to save her. While the cops surround Mao, Lelouch carried C2 away in his arms. C2 tries to convince Lelouch to let her talk to him, but this request falls on deaf ears as the cops shoot Mao anyways. What we learn here is that C2 is not fully committed to Lelouch, as she wanted to still help Mao. She had a chance to kill him, but could not pull the trigger. And this forced Lelouch to save her. After the rescue, Lelouch declares that he will fulfill his contract and not let Gias overtake him as it did Mao. C2 accepts the contract with the same expression and tone she showed in the cave of Narita. C2 shows her commitment to Lelouch when she kills Mao at the end of stage 16. This will be the first of three times in the story where C2 kills slash betrays people she worked with in the past to support Lelouch now in the present. There are moments of a potential romance between them, but we don't see much until after the massacre of the specially administrative zone of Japan. We actually get two. The first one's when C2 tells Suzaku that she will never allow him to kill Lelouch. This happened after Lelouch shot Yuffie, and Suzaku, in a rage, went to charge at him to get her. What separates this from the time she saved him from Cornelia is her tone. It's more emotional and less business-like how she was when they first worked together. The other moment is how Lelouch broke down after his conversation with Nunnally. Everything that he had done had hit him all at once and C2 hugged him. She promised to be with him until the end. And this promise was not just about the contract anymore as we will see later on. During the Black Rebellion, there's a shift in C2's priorities. Lelouch had finally gotten Cornelia where he wanted her, but C2 interrupts the interrogation to tell Lelouch that Nelly had been captured. She understands that this is his reason for living. C2 is acting on Lelouch's sake and interests rather than her own. C2 and Lelouch share a lot of nice moments once they arrive on Kamina Island. The first one is where Lelouch tells C2 that he trusts her, and she's very relieved to hear that. Almost appreciative. And the other is after they trigger the Gias booby trap, where Lelouch sees C2's memories, and even though C2 says that she's alone, Lelouch tells her you're not alone, and I will be your devil if you're a witch. This moment of tenderness is ruined when Jeremiah returns. During the battle against Jeremiah, C2 tells Lelouch that she will handle him. What follows is the first of two times that C2 kisses Lelouch. C2 kisses Lelouch after telling him he must prevail. Lelouch asks C2 to not die after she drops him off on Kamina Island. C2 then replies, Who are you talking to? This would be the start of C2 and Lelouch's series of flirting and teasing in Kogias. So after R1, C2 went from someone who only saw Lelouch as another contract to a close friend, and maybe something more. But you will see from R2 how this relationship evolves to the next level. The beginning of R2 starts with the rescue of Lelouch. One of my favorite parts of this is where C2 tells Lelouch that she knows his true self. It subtly shows how C2 cares more about Lelouch than the contract. During this rescue, C2 would kiss Lelouch for the second time, and the purpose was to undo the effects of Charles Gias. After the rescue, Lelouch and C2 share another moment of friendly teasing and flirting. 
If you will pay attention to Code Geass R2, you will find many examples of this. It's one of the examples that you can point to as proof that a romance is forming between them. Another example is how C2 shifts her priorities. She spends more time talking with Lelouch about saving Nunnally than fulfilling her contract. It would be more accurate to say that the contract is no longer a priority. Even when talking with Marianne, C2 mentioned that Lelouch seems to have forgot about the contract altogether. Lelouch interrupted that conversation to talk to C2 about Shirley. This takes place right after Rollo killed her. Lelouch demands to know where the order is and requests C2 to help him destroy it. C2 agrees to do this, making this the second time she killed past acquaintances to show her loyalty to Lelouch. This was a hard decision for C2, and during the massacre, you can tell that she did not want to do this, but she did so to help Lelouch. After the massacre of the Gias Order, Lelouch ends up with the Sword of Akasha. He encounters his father, who tricked him into thinking his Gias had worked on him. Charles transports Lelouch to another dimension, and during their conversation, C2 appears. She explains that her wish is to die, and that Lelouch must take her code from her to do this. When Lelouch refused, C2 almost allowed Charles to take her code, but she stops after Lelouch convinces her that she should die with a smile on her face and that he can make her wish come true. He, of course, learned about C2's wish while experiencing her memories firsthand. C2 seals her code and memories during her rescue in turn 15. She gets them back in turn 20, around the same time Lelouch confronts his father in C's world, after the Black Knights betrayed him. C2 and Suzaku join Lelouch in confronting Marianne and Charles in C's world. After hearing their plans, Lelouch rejects their ideas and commands C's role to stop the Ragnarok connection to not allow time to stop. Marianne and Charles are then consumed by C's world, but oddly enough, C2 wasn't. They were both confused why this happened, and C2 explained that in the end, she did not believe in their plan, and she realized they only really loved each other. This is now the third instance where C2 sides with Felouch over her past allies, which leads to their destruction. During the entire Zero Requiem, C2's true thoughts become apparent. After Suzaku reprimands Lelouch for showing weakness after Nully unexpectedly called him, Suzaku and C2 talk outside the room. Suzaku explains that he is Lelouch's sword and C2 is his shield. He calls Lelouch C2's accomplice. C2 whispers to herself, accomplice? As in a surprised manner. And there's a lot to unpack here. C2 is basically implying that there is no contract anymore. After all, Lelouch refused to take her code, and the only other person who could have is dead. Plus, C2 no longer wishes to die anyways. Now, it's true that she does want Lelouch to fulfill her promise to make her happy, but that type of contract is not on the same level as the Gios one. Also, since the Ragnarok connection is now over, C2 has no reason to stick around and help Lelouch. She's immortal and can move on with her life. But here's the thing. She doesn't, which indicates to me that she loved Lelouch and meant it when she said... She promised to be with him until the end. The conversation they share on the bed furthers this idea. But then we get a conversation in turn 24 that I never thought about too much until a recent rewatch of the series. C2 asks Lelouch in the hangar if he hates her for cheating him out of his life by giving him Gios. Lelouch told C2 it helped him on his path to destroying Britannia and it was his choice to do it. But why does C2 ask this question? Where does this thought even come from? Remember when I said to remember that conversation between... Lelouch and C2, after he erased Shirley's memories, well, here's where it comes into place. In that conversation, Lelouch called C2 a monster, yet she ruins people's lives with Gias. So C2 this whole time thought she ruined not only Mao's life, but Lelouch's. This is why Lelouch's answer made her smile. And then she said, in all my life, I've never met a man like you. It must have been very comforting to know that she didn't ruin Lelouch's life. He chose this path. It's not her fault. C2 expresses how she's very happy when Lelouch tells her that she's no match for the Gurren Satan 8 elements. She even tells Lelouch to please come back because that would make her happy and Lelouch promises to do so. So again, while C2 never says I love you, it's not unreasonable to interpret these statements as a declaration of love. We do get a bump in the road that might go against this. During her battle against Colin, when asked by Colin if she loved Lelouch, she responds with, I do not know. She does confirm that she wants to start living, and keep in mind, Lelouch was the one who encouraged her to think this way. While she might have had some uncertainties, 
By the time we get to the end of Arc 2, turn 25, it's easier to see how C2 feels. Before Suzaku as Zero kills Lelouch, C2 is shown crying in a church. And then towards the end of the series, she closes Kogias with the following. I said that Gias was the power of the king, which would condemn you to a life of solitude. I think maybe that's not quite correct, right, Lelouch? You can interpret this as she was talking to either herself or Lelouch. Either way, it points out that Gias brought them together instead of opposing a life of solitude. And when you think about it, this line summarizes how Lelouch and C2's relationship evolved in Code Gias. C2 only wanted to be alone and just get this contract over with so she could die. But she realized that living could also be a reality. She just needed the right person to show her the way. C2 left everyone to help Lelouch, Mao, the Gias Order, Marianne and Charles. Her commitment to Lelouch was not just bound by Gias, but by life. C2 found someone in Lelouch that she never had before. Someone who encouraged her to keep going, appreciates her, and was even willing to save her. And for this and so many other reasons, C2 loved Lelouch, and I think it was a mutual relationship. And one other thing I wanted to add, I wasn't going to discuss the Resurrection film, but I wanted to point out one thing that I think really relates to this. So if you don't want to hear spoilers on the film, skip to this part in the video. But in that film, C2 takes care of Lelouch even though his mind's been wiped. Because she promised to be with him until the end. And what I like about this is Lelouch also took care of her when her mind wasn't wiped but it was sealed. So in both cases, they took care of each other in their worst because that's how devoted they were. And with that, we have come to the end. If you enjoyed this video, please share and like it. If you want more Kogias content and do not want to wait for videos to come out, then please check out my blog. I have plenty of Kogias articles as well as other anime stuff you can read. Much like how manga and anime adaptations work, my articles will come out first with a video version to be made later. Please grab my anime streaming guide. The January 2021 edition is out and I have big plans for this guide going forward, so it's something you do not want to miss. But I want to hear from you guys. Do you think C2 in the end loved Lelouch? If so, what moment made a believer out of you? Also, what is your favorite Lelouch and C2 moment? Let me know in the comments. And heck, let me know what other topics you want me to cover. Anime, Kogias, anything. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.